So far we've covered quite a few of the important deities that make an appearance in the Cthulhu mythos, but there is one outer god in particular that many of you have been requesting for quite a long time. So in today's video we will be covering Shubnigareth, also known as the Black Goat in the Woods of a Thousand Young. Similar to many other deities, Shubnigareth is an entity originally mentioned by Lovecraft, but only expanded on by the many authors and contributors that followed. She first appeared in the story titled The Last Test in 1928, but remains a figure that Lovecraft never really explained or expanded on. We do hear the name mentioned in various rituals and incantations, but nearly all of her description and lore comes from August Derleth, Robert Bloch, Ramsey Campbell, and many more of the Mythos authors. Now as to what Shubnigareth actually appears as, that's a bit harder to explain. She is essentially an enormous mass of horrid proportion, a cloud of black goo from which emerges dozens of goat legs, hundreds of flailing black tentacles, and several mouths dripping with blood and slime. These mouths continuously spit out small creatures, and that is one of the main reasons that Shubnegarath is regarded as a deity of fertility, be it far more grotesque than the deities of fertility that we may be used to from traditional mythology. Now as for the origins of the name itself, much of Lovecraft's work was influenced by Lord Dunsany, and it's likely that Shubnegarath is a reference to a character in Dunsany's Dreamer's Tales, called Shol Nuganoth, who is also a deity associated with the wild and untamed nature. In terms of the rather odd family tree that many have attempted to piece together, Shubnegarath is one of the oldest deities to exist, Azathoth of course being the first and the oldest, followed by the Nameless Mist and its sibling, the Unnamed Darkness. Shubnegarath is considered a child of the darkness, and Yorxathoth himself came from the Nameless Mist, so there are definitely some parallels that we can draw there, considering that Shubnegarath was both the mate and wife to Yorxathoth, making her one of the potential mothers of Nug and Yeb, and the grandmother to our favourite Squid Boy, the great dreamer Cthulhu. It's also believed that she mated with the king in yellow, Hastur, producing several different creatures, the most well known being the Thousand Young, who are also referred to as the Dark Young in some cases. Now these children are quite similar in description to their mother, they appear as a collection of tentacles pitch black in colour, capable of growing as big as 20 feet tall, standing on stumpy hoof legs like grotesque trees in a dying forest. The dark young are often described as abominations that smell like an open grave, and they can often be found in woodlands wherever their mother's cult has an active following. In some cases the dark young can act as an avatar, or as a mouthpiece for their mother, accepting the sacrifices from the cult on her behalf. There is one ritual that can be found in the Book of Abon that summons a dark young through a blood offering. It states that the victim must be sacrificed over a stone altar deep in the woodlands at the darkest of the moon. The dark young would then manifest, devouring the offering intended for their mother. Why these cults have no direct interaction with Shibnigrath isn't really mentioned, but it may have something to do with the fact that we don't really know where she currently resides, and haven't done so for some time. The most common theory being that she's located deep beneath the surface, on the planet Yadith. Yadith was originally a planet inhabited by the Nog Soth, but eventually they were overwhelmed by a race of huge worm-like creatures called the Dolls, who completely destroyed the Nog Soth in their attempt to annihilate the planet, but Shubnigrath was able to survive, and has been under the planet's surface ever since. Another interesting theory makes a distinction between Shubnigrath and the Black Goat, claiming that they are in fact two separate entities. The Black Goat is described as a male figure, being referred to as the Lord of the Woods in The Whisper in the Darkness which is also a title used to describe the Greek god of the wild Pan, who himself is a deity associated with fertility. This then led to the theory that the black goat is actually the personification of Pan, who in turn is the earthly avatar of Shubnegareth, who breeds with her followers. In relation to who actually worshipped her, there are several groups that we can take a look at. These included the Hyperboreans, a race of mythical human-like entities, believed to have originated from the far north in a lost era. The humans of the city Sarnath, who existed some 10,000 years ago, were also said to be amongst her followers. The Mu or the Muvians were primarily a race known for their worship of Gitanathoa, the firstborn of Cthulhu, but they did have one member among them known as Tiog, who would eventually become a high priest of Shibnigareth, looking for her assistance in destroying Gitanathoa and its followers. She was also worshipped by a number of alien species, including the Migo and the Nog Sath. I know at times these lesser mentioned alien species can get a bit confusing, so I think I'll make a follow-up video going over some of them in some more detail. One thing to note is that many of her followers believe that her milk mutated those who drank it into terrible creatures, so we do have this weird notion of her followers seeing this as the end goal, becoming one of her repulsive children. In Shubnigrath we have another deity created by Lovecraft who he himself never really expanded upon, it was instead the writers who followed who took the idea and implemented it in their own stories. Some of the most famous examples included Stephen King, who referenced her several times, including in his novel Revival, and then again in his story Crouch End, where we see a woman being pursued by the minions of the goat for the thousand young, eventually being hunted by the goat itself towards the end of the story. Terry Pratchett was also an author well known for taking the works of Lovecraft and adding his own humorous spin. 
For example, Pratchett has a character in moving pictures called Teshep Alkathep, the infernal star toad with a million young. It was known to kill its victims by showing them pictures of its children until their brains would explode. There are dozens of books, TV shows, mangas, and games that in some way reference the character, and I'm sure many of you have fought against Shubnigarath as a boss in the latest South Park game, which of course has its own rather comical approach to Lovecraft's deities. In terms of her overall role in the mythos, honestly I don't really know, and I suppose that's how it's meant to be. To me she fills the role of the mother deity that we see in so many other mythologies, so perhaps she is the dark twisted earth mother of cosmic horror. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.